Hi, this is Sean. So I promised I was going to diversify my channel a little bit. So I decided to do that today. Um, and I thought I'd make a video on my 10 favorite French films. Um, so I know some people don't like, you know, having to read subtitles and, and things like that. And some people, when I tell them <laughs> that I like French cinema, it's like, oh, you're so pretentious, blah, blah, blah. And that's true. Um, but what I would say is, for me, French cinema is from the best in the world. And also, there's lots of different, obviously, genres and types of film within that. And there's something for everyone, really. Um, I am a French learner. I'm a Francophile, so I you know, speak French and things like that. So I love French cinema because it helps me to learn as well. But in and of itself, um, I also love it. So... I've always watched French films since I was young, and these are my favorite 10. I'm not saying these are the best 10 films <laughs> that France has to offer, but basically what I'm doing is giving you guys the benefit of some of my experience. No, I'm kidding. Um, so these are just some things that I've picked up and um, some films that I watch again and again because I really love them. Um, if you have any recommendations, post them in the comments because I'm always looking out for, for new ones. And if you're into French cinema, you'll know that sometimes it's quite difficult to get hold of certain films and things like that without getting them without subtitles or, or whatever. So um, I am always looking for those recommendations. These are in no particular order. And the idea is that if you know nothing about French cinema, some of these are classics, so so they'll... they'll um, give you a bit of knowledge of, of, of French cinema, but also some of them are just not classics, they're just my favorites, so you're not gonna necessarily learn about the canon of French cinema from, from, from watching these necessarily. Again, in no particular order, and the first one, I've decided actually as well to, I was gonna pick some that I don't own, but I decided to just go through my shelves and pick ones that I own. So for example, there's a film called La N. I'll put, <laughs> Um, a picture up here which is a classic which I don't own so I've not listed it on this list but that's a film you should really check out um, it's a film about some young men growing up in, in poor parts of Paris and it's about race and, and their relationship with the police and things like that and that is a classic film that um, you know you should watch if you, if you want to know about French cinema but I haven't included it in this list because as I said I do not own it so Firstly, uh, Breathless. Um, if I know the French titles, I will say them as well, um, because sometimes the titles are in French, sometimes they're in English. Uh, A bout de souffle, as it says on the case. And this is Jean-Luc Godard, who's a, a director from the new wave of French cinema. This is from 1959. And basically, it's about this guy walking around Paris with this girl. I haven't watched it in, in ages, so I'm not gonna pretend <laughs> that I completely remember the story and things like that. But this this was one of the films that started off the new wave and started off the new, a new era of cool in French cinema. Um, a guy called Jean-Paul Belmondo is in it and he's quite famous in France and he's, you know, in, in quite a lot of films in the 60s and, and really well known, still alive, still alive now, as far as I'm aware, actually. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. Um, so Jean-Luc Godard, if you know anything about French cinema, he's one of the greatest directors in French cinema. Um, he's not one of my favorites as such. Like if, if I'm, if I'm going to watch a film, I won't necessarily reach for one of his films, but I do own quite a lot of them because they're classics and, and you know, you need to watch them if you want to know about French cinema. This was his first film. So I wouldn't say it was my favorite one, but he's also known for being very political. So a lot of his films touched upon Marxism and things like that, particularly as he went through the 60s. Um, and yeah, it's a classic. should watch it if you want to know about French cinema. But it, it, it is an enjoyable film. It's a bit of a... Um, it was like the the Nouvelle Vague was kind of like the punk of, of French cinema in the, in the 1950s. Um, so yeah, watch it. Number one. Um, this one is Rust and Bone, it's called, I cannot remember the French title, will it be on the back? Um, no, I know what bone is in French, but not rust. 
Les O. But anyway, anyway, so this film, Marion Cotillard, um, and um, basically she plays a whale trainer and she loses both her legs. And, and this guy, Matthias Schoenart, don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, he is, um, I think he's a traveler and, and they live in the, in the south of France. And a really, really gritty film. He fights for money and, and, and things like that and helps her because she loses both her legs in an accident. Um, I watched this during, during COVID and it's just so, the film is like so visceral. It had such a profound effect on me physically when I was watching it. I was, I was sobbing at the end and it, it, this guy is quite well known because he directed a film called The Prophet um, and, and amongst other films. Um, but I'd really recommend this particular film, not for the faint hearted because it's really kind of a bit grim, a bit depressing. Um, but it, but it is a, a great film. I've only watched it once, and I haven't rewatched it because I don't think the impact would be as great the second time. But great film, can't recommend it highly enough. Um, third, La Grande Vadrouille. <laughs> I'm probably not saying that greatly. Um, so this is a film about the French occupation um, by the Germans, and it, like basically means the Great Journey and. These two guys are trying to escape from the Nazis, and they go across the um, across France, and it, it's really interesting this film for a British person because um, Louis de Funès and, and Borville are quite famous in in France as a kind of a double act, um, but there's also Terry Thomas is in it, an English um, actor, and it's almost like a French film that could be British, kind of. Um, and this was very, very successful. This was um, up until the release of another French film called Bienvenue Chez Les Tea. This was the most successful French film of all time in France. Um, so it's very, very well known. And, you know, it's, it, it's a light-hearted view of the French occupation, if you like. It's a comedy. Um, I'd really recommend it. It's a really good watch. Um, I really enjoyed it. The, the two main actors are, are, are funny and um, good on the screen and it provides a, a bit of a contrast to another film that's on this list. Um, so this is, this is a, a collection, but I pick one particular film from it. Cedric Klopich, who's a, who's a director. Um, this one here, Chacun Cher Son Chat. It's um, a film about someone who loses the cat. Uh, which the, it's I'm not going to pretend that this is one of the best films ever made cinematically but I quite like light-hearted films that are just kind of lightweight and and easy to watch and they show you the city but cities in, in France and things like that um so Cedric Clapiche I'd really recommend him because I, another one of my favorite directors is called Eric Romer and it's a bit similar to his films um Cedric Clapiche is still making films he released a film this year and this collection's really good. He's quite well known in France. Uh, he makes popular films, really, so they're not works of high art or anything. But um, yeah, I'd, I'd really recommend Cedric Clapiche. Check check him out. Um, another collection, and I'm I'm gonna say the collection is what what I, I like here. Um, and it's the the Adventures of Antoine Duanel, and. This is by a director called Francois Truffaut, who is also from the new wave of French cinema. And the first film in this series was called The, F the 400 Bl Blows, Les Quatre Cents Coups. And um, that was in 1959, and it followed this young man, Antoine Donnell, and then Truffaut followed him throughout his life, obviously fictionalized. Um, I would say my favourites are Stolen Kisses and Bed and Board. Um, Stolen Kisses, Baiser Volé, and Bed and Board, Domicile Conjugal. Um, and yeah, I really like the character. The films are, are, are really um, quite funny and, and, and quite quite touching. And I really, I really love this, this series. I'm not such a massive fan of Truffaut, to be honest. Um, I don't know why his films don't really do it for me, but I really love the character of Antoine Duanel and this particular series of films. Um, 
This is not a collection, but I only own this film as part of a collection. So this film is called L'Armée des Ombres, uh, The Army of Shadows, and it's by a director called Jean-Pierre Melville. And and basically, the, the Army of Shadows is about French occupation. Again, it's about the resistance, and it's an incredibly bleak film. Um, what's the guy they called? I was going to say Milo Ventimiglia, but that's um, someone from Heroes. Um, Lino Ventura um, and it's it's just such a good film if you're going to watch one film about the French occupation L'Armée des Ombres is, is a fantastic film um, probably my, one of my favourite films of all time like I said it's really bleak and, and kind of depressing um, Jean-Pierre Melville his films are like that anyway to be honest and I would recommend all of the films on here that they're, they're, they're so good so incredibly good um, many of them starring Alain Delon, Delon. Um, yeah L'Armée des Ombres great film um, another one of my favourite directors is called Eric Roma um, and he made films in se- in series so he's got his uh, four se- Tales of the Four Seasons and he's got um, The Moral Tales and oh god what's the other one Comedies and Proverbs and the one that I choose from this is, is A Summer's Tale, Conte d'Ete, and, or Con, Conte Ver, actually, Winter's Tale, and actually, yeah, Winter's Tale, I went to tell, go with that one. That, that, that's a film that I watch every Christmas in December, and um, it's about a woman who basically has a holiday romance, and then she refuses to, she loses touch with the man, but she refuses to, to give up the idea that she'll, she'll meet him again. Um, it's just a lovely film. Roma's films are quite light-hearted, but they're also quite heavy on dialogue. Um, they're often about young people talk about philosophy and things like that. You know, pretentious classic um, French pretension. But I'd recommend Eric Roma. His films are, are really good, but they're easy to watch, and he's always been probably my favorite French director. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, another one this would probably be the film that I would say was my favourite film if anyone asked me and it's it's called Les Chansons d'Amour and it's by a director called Christophe Honoré and basically it's it's about um, this guy who's in a menage à toi and something happens and then something else happens don't want to spoil it Um, but it's a musical as well I'm not a fan of musicals um, but there's a, there's a kind of thing in French cinema about musicals because of one particular classic which comes next uh, and it's influenced this film and they they just break into song every now and again and it, it's part of the story. Um, the songs are actually good um, by a guy called, called Alex Bopin. He's a, he's a singer in, in, in France. Um, it's a good cast. Um, Louis Garrel, Ludovine Sagnier, um and it's it's a good film. It's a really good film. And Christophe Honoré, good. And I don't like all of his films, but this one is one of my personal favorites. And then next, um, the Umbrellas of Cherbourg, Le Parapluie de Cherbourg. <laughs> um, this is about a, a young couple um, who are in their first love, and it's got music by Michel. Le Grand and um, Jacques Demy and Michel Legrand's really famous uh, as a composer in French cinema Jacques Demy is famous too as a director it's got Catherine Deneuve in it who's obviously very famous um, every line in this film is sung so it's, it's it's a musical in the sense that everything is sung it, it, they don't just break into song every now and again they say hello I'm here and everything is sung in that way like an opera and it sounds ridiculous, and to a certain extent it is, but it just really works in this film. The music is really good. Um, it's a brilliant film. It's really moving. It's it's really good. I don't like musicals, but it's it's a classic, and it's it's a really really good film. Um, the Double Life of Veronique. Um, this guy called Krzysztof Kislowski. He wasn't French. He was Polish, if I remember rightly. Um, and he started to make films in France and he made a series called Three Colours about the, the colours of the, of the French flag. 
This one is about a woman and her doppelganger. I think one's in Poland and one's in France. And it's just a brilliant film. I mean, cinematically, it's so good. Um, it's got some famous shots in it. And it's just a great film. It's really, really a great film. Um, the Free Colors series, I think it, it's a bit highbrow. Uh, but this film, I think anyone can kind of appreciate it. Um, just because of the sheer beauty of the of the way it's shot and and, and th things like that. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the last one. Um, as I've said, you know, feel free to skip this video if you're not into the idea of French cinema. But if you are, I really recommend those ten films. And like I said, hit me in the comments if you've got any films that you would recommend that I watch. Thanks very much. Bye bye. <laughs>